everybody, it's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is Pose Season 2, Episode 8. Hands down, one of the best episodes of Pose um, of the whole two seasons. Damon was feeling the fire, honey, and he was lighting bitches up the whole episode. I don't want to waste any time, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So we start off with Pray Tell and Ricky. Pray Tell is just talking to Ricky about all the vitamins that he needs to take and everything he needs to do to kind of like take care of himself now that he knows that he has HIV. And Ricky is really upset. He's talking about nobody's going to love him. Nobody's going to date him anymore. And uh, Pray Tell is telling him that you need to focus on your health, okay? And you need to tell Damon very soon, sooner rather than later, so that he can get tested as well. So they're watching TV in the house and they just, you know, talking about him eating more vegetables and how him and Damon used to just eat Hot Pockets and shit, live off of that Hot Pockets and Chiwis and you know, they was living their best life. He was like, Ricky said something to them, oh, you like them fat? And he was like, you, you know, you rather, I would rather you be alive. You ain't got to know what you being thick or small. We want you to be alive, like in the land of the living, my nigga. So take care of yourself. He starts to tell him about Judy Garland and the story on TV. The part was for Judy Garland, but she didn't get it because she was drunk in her trailer. He talks about when he was ki a kid and all they had was movies and books and things like this. And Ricky is just fascinated by him. He's sophisticated. You know what I'm saying? He's so sophisticated. As he's about to leave, he asks, Pray tell, can he stay over there for the night? Because, you know, late at night, Electra be bringing home her men and shit get real, you know, strange, okay? <laughs> so Pray tell said, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, you know, make up the bed. You can sleep on the couch or whatever. And so he closes the door to his boudoir, okay? I love those doors that he have, those French doors. I would love to have that on my bedroom. But um, he closes the door to his boudoir, and I already know it was gonna be some bed creeping, honey. Next thing you know, here come Ricky hopping his ass up in the bed. Talking about that couch was lumpy and you know, you figured you had, I figured you had this big bed so you know, we could, uh, we could share the bed or whatever. He turns around and tells Pray Tell, you know what, I got a thing for you. Like he just admitted and Pray Tell is like, you just confused, you're going through a lot, you know what I'm saying, you know what you're talking about baby, you confused. And then he reached out and put his hand on that thing and he was like, do this, do this feel like I'm confused? And I was like, Pray Tell, Pray Tell, don't do that now, don't do that. So, child, once Bretel got his hand on that thing, him and Ricky went to getting it. Whip Appeal was playing in the background. Now, don't get me wrong, I am happy for the gay black men that they can have sex on TV because Lord knows the white men's been doing it on How to Get Away with Murder and every other channel. They got a gay white man couple and they having sex or kissing or whatever on TV. So, I'm glad the black gay men can do it too. But baby, if I never had to see Pray Tell have sex again, like I never wanted to see Billy Porter have sex. Like it was like watching my uncle have sex. So I wasn't for that part of it. But um, you know, congratulations. Y'all, you know, the final frontier has been crossed, okay? But um if I never had to see that again in my life, like I wouldn't be upset. I didn't not want to see Billy Porter have sex with anybody. But him and him and Ricker. Him and Ricky. Him and Ricky have sex with each other. I mean, Ricky do him. He do Ricky. I said, uh-oh, y'all better be versatile in this piece, all right? So they getting it. I was slightly throwing him over my mouth a little bit. But, you know, I was, you know, kind of happy for him. But not really. Um, Because he shouldn't be doing that with him because of Damon and... It's just too close. You know what I'm saying? It's too close. Angel and Poppy, and they're in the bed. They're looking at her BB campaign. You know, she's really proud of herself, but you can tell that she kind of fucking high the whole time they're talking. But her and him talk about the photographer. Now, one thing I don't like about Pose is how, like, they'll put up this big plot line, and you can tell they just ain't have enough room to fit all that shit in the episode, and they kind of just, like, glaze over it. But she says that the photographer was very aggressive with her and the thing, it, everything was super awkward and she didn't want to say anything because she didn't want him to tell everybody, you know, what was up or whatever. And um, she said he didn't say anything either because the, cam the campaign must have been really important to him too as well because he didn't say anything at, at all. So they love each other and this, that, and the other. And, you know, he tells her that he wants to show her something important. So they go to this apartment and it's a nice apartment. It's in the village close to where the piers are. If you remember the piers, this is where Angel was selling herself and where Poppy was hustling and selling drugs or whatever. She could see it out the window. He tells her, you know, it's for his friend that it's so much money a month, $450, which is hell, nothing must be rent controlled 
or something. He says that she's making money now. She don't have to stay with Blanca. You know, maybe it's time for her to level up and move out and be on her own. And he said he don't even have to move in there with her. He'll stay with Blanca. You know, she could just live there by herself. Because she's like the last person who got me on apartment. You know, it's just like going to be his little play thing. You know, uncool for him. You know. And he was like, nah, I stay at the house with Blanca. Like, this is for you. This is for your career. This is so you know that you know you can do these things. This is so you can do drugs. You know what I'm saying? Snort coke in peace and like destroy your life in peace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pray tell meets the MCs. This is for their annual meeting, right? Down to the diner. And Shade and T was, you know, all thrown the whole time. It was hilarious. Like, literally, these are some of the favorite, my favorite scenes in Pose because this group of guys is so funny. So, um, he's late. And, honey, when I tell you he hopping and skipping, like, he just got off that pogo stick, baby. He is hopping and skipping into the diner, honey. They like, what the fuck? You happy as hell? Like, what's the tea? They have business to take care of. You know, they collect money for trophies. And when homeboy gave $2, pray tell said $2. I I said we all was gonna contribute, bitch. I said I was gonna get more than two dollars. Fuck you talking about? Category, the um, candies category is still popular. Um, and now the butch queens want to get in on it too, right? So you know, pray tell is like, you know what? That's great. Whatever, just let them do it. Fine, motion approved. And they like, uh, 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 uh. You always got opinion about categories or whatever. You positively glowing, baby. What's going on with you? He says. I must tell you guys, I, I've taken a lover. Oh, she know. We happy for you. You know, ain't nobody busting cakes open since Keenan. You know, we're happy for you. It's been a long time. He says he's a younger man. And, you know, his lips, honey. He's got abs and he's got lips. And he does the thing, honey. And, you know, all of this here. One of the guys is like, listen, you got to watch them young men. They be having a complex. They be looking for love and approval they didn't get from their dad. And some of them chimed in and said, hey, you do you. You know what I'm saying? Be grown. Do it. Do what you do. And he was like, the sex is amazing. Oh, my God. It's so good. And they was like, okay, bitch, well, who is it? Okay, bitch, like, I'm on here. Who is it? Another funny line was, you know, you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? The good thing about young men is they don't come with a lot of baggage. But that's because they can't afford none. Everybody busted out laughing. He eventually told him that it was Ricky. And they was like, oh my God, honey, he's an infant, honey. And they're like, she's robbing the cradle. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I lived for this whole scene. He said it went from in living color till four o'clock in the morning, honey, doing it. And then they asked about Damon. Damon gonna be pressed. And he like, listen, we grown. They not together no more. You know what I'm saying? We doing what we do. And so they basically tell him to be happy. But he needs to tell Blanca because you know she gonna find out anyway. So he need to go ahead and tell her. So I feel like Pray Tell is wrong for this. I do feel like they both grown. And nobody owns anybody, right? But at the end of the day, you are not their father. But you're kind of like their father. So you should not be sleeping with... If nothing else because of your friendship with Damon that you should not be sleeping with Ricky because you be at the house eating with them because you knew they was together. Like, pray tell, come on now. You 40 some years old. You know better than this. This is too much. At the house, at Blanca's house, uh, Damon and Ricky are there and Damon's making some pizza rolls and now Ricky's talking about him on no pizza roll child because he's sophisticated. Okay? He's sophisticated now so his palate has changed and he don't want to eat no pizza rolls or whatever. And so he tells him he misses the house and especially last week and then they get started getting into Damon kisses him nobody is home Damon says that he's gotten some clarity and he's ready to take Ricky back he's he's not tired of punishing him and you know now he's ready to be back with him and so Ricky tells him that he well, Ricky's like I gotta tell you something and he tells him that he's HIV positive at first Damon is like He's not really moved by it. It kind of takes him a second. He's like, boy, stop playing with me. You know, at first, um, he don't really understand what's going on. He said, we just went to get tested and we both came out negative. And he says, I got a call from Chris. He was crying and all that. And he's like, oh, so you told me you didn't sleep with Chris. So you was lying to me or whatever. He's like, I know. I'm sorry. I fucked up. I know. And I was like, here we go. Here we go. He says he knows he needs to grow up and he's sorry. He's basically just sitting up there taking whatever Damon was giving him because he knew he deserved it. You lied to him and said you didn't with this person you did then you came back home i'm assuming that they slept together without a condom on because why would you be this upset 
if you hadn't slept with him, right? So he's done exposed him to this virus. I'm pretty sure when they were sitting up there eating chiwis and pizza rolls, they probably was playing with each other or did a little something, something even though they ain't together no more. You know what I'm saying? He tells him he knows he needs to grow up and that's why he been hanging out with Pray Tell. And so... Damon is mad because Pray Tell knew before him and he says he been helping me, he been teaching me things or whatever. And he was like, teaching you what? Damon kind of puts it together like, Oh, yo, fuck it up. Damon don't want to talk no more, okay? He tell him, get the out, okay? He starts crying, he's screaming, and you know, Ricky's like, please go get tested here. Like, doing shit for you okay get out ricky leaves damon just crumbling you know crumbling to the ground child just crying we are now at damon senior dance recital and he's killing it or the dance double for him killed it or whatever did a great dance if you never heard it or seen it before this is the dance called revelations it's an alvin ailey dance or whatever that's what he did so i'm thinking they're pattering pattern 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 pattering no Patterning. They are making his story similar to the Alvin Ailey story, kind of, because Alvin Ailey got exposed or he got AIDS from a boyfriend too. But I hope that Damon don't have AIDS, but I'm just saying. Um, the dance was amazing. It was beautifully done. Um, after the recital is over, they're leaving, taking pictures and all of that. The teacher, if y'all don't know her, this teacher, she played Aunt Viv's sister. Everybody been saying she looked like first. She I like remind you of Aunt Viv, but she played Aunt Viv's sister. If y'all don't remember that, number one, number two, she was in the original cast of Amos behaving i know because i've done amos behaving her name is charlene woodard and um when you get the when you get the script it has the original cast members names in it because there's no character names it's just whoever is doing it you use your name so i was playing her character so charlene woodard when i watched the video i was like oh that's her that's that like oh from pose or whatever so yeah she was on pose and she was on a fresh visibility and if you remember her as sister i don't know sister mary clarence bitch i don't know her name sister um, marry somebody on SVU. She used to be giving the hoes, you know, condoms and stuff out here, taking care of the ladies of the night. You know what I'm saying? So she been around a long time acting. And I was sad when she, I think she got killed off that show or so something happened to her when she had to go. Anywho, she talks to Blanca outside and basically they thanking each other for, you know, being there for Damon, encouraging him and whatnot. And she said the people that she was talking about, they not scared to, or they not afraid of dying. They, they care about their impact in the world or the legacy that they leave. And she tells her that, you know, she had more compassion for her kids and more fight for her children than, than some biological mothers or whatever. And she says, well, you think Damon can be one of those people that make their mark? And she's like, oh, well, yeah, Damon got a bright career in front of him, but I'm talking about you. I saw you when you came into my room and you demanded that I give him an audition. I saw that in you. You fight for your children. And she says that it has been wonderful to be Damon's teacher over the years, but it has been an honor to know you. I was like, this is so nice. I was kind of sad to see her character go. Like, there's no reason for her character to be in there other than maybe hope she have tea or something or coffee with Blanca and they could like be good, good girlfriends. Like, I was love that because her character is just there's just a warmness about this woman like i just want to meet her in person she like type person who give hugs you know what i'm saying like i just <laughs> i just want to meet her and just hug her and talk to her for a minute because she just looked like she got so much knowledge and like so much you know like so many pearls she could just drop on you about life and performance and theater and acting that's just the actor and singer side of me i just want to meet her and talk to her because i know she probably had a breath of experience in this long career that she's had but I thought that was a lovely scene between the two of them. So we back at the house and bitch, when I tell you it went down in this scene, it went down in my New Orleans voice. All the way down, baby. So they back at the house, they having a little graduation party and they want Damon to do a little speech. Here's the reenactment. I wrote down everything just for you guys. Hey, now that I'm out of school, you know, I think I'm gonna start uh, being a little bit selfish, you know, trying to work on myself and my career and get things together. <laughs> Oh, you gonna start me on selfish? Oh, you gonna start? Girl, I am cleansing the negativity out of my life, girl. Watch out, sis, because you might be next. Hey, yo, so Damon, what you gonna do when you get out? Well, my degree's in dance, so, you know, I'm going to try to dance. So, like, what's the future for a dancer? Well, if he's talented and works hard, you know, the future will be great. Oh, well, damn, that's gonna be a short-lived career. Well, it'll definitely be longer than a model's career. <laughs> you just mad because I'm on all the magazines and all the billboards all over the city. Okay, you just mad. People recognize me when I go into Roy Rogers. I don't know if it's really Roy Rogers, y'all, but it's Roy something. <laughs>
Do they recognize you from Wen Wild or from the pier? Oh, so you got jokes. You and Damon got jokes. Oh, so you judging my survival? Okay, party over. That's enough. Let's not let's not do this. And when Electra and Lulu, that they was us. Electra, Lulu, and us. Bitch, we were sitting in the other seat at the table, okay? <laughs> Lulu tried to get up and leave. Alexa say, bitch, sit your ass down, girl. This the tea, girl. Don't get up. What you get up for? Fuck you, Damon. Enough! I think I'm the only man that hasn't. It's all right because <laughs> he's going to be upset when I'm touring the world, doing all these campaigns for major companies, and he touring the world on some corny-ass one-hit wonder shit. What campaign are you going to get, girl, with that cracked face? Sis, that not is love sweat. Blanca asks if she on drugs, and Angel says, no, she not on drugs. And, you know, everybody is saying she lying. Lulu was like, what you was doing in the bathroom when I came up in there yesterday? And so Lulu seen her doing drugs. Um, Damon seen her doing drugs. But Blanca don't believe that Angel is on drugs. She straight basically called him a liar. And Damon is pissed at this point. He's really pissed and I would have been too. She's like, this is a serious accusation. And Damon is like, what? What more do you need? Angel doubles down and says, you a liar. Remember when you was fucking Ricky without a condom raw? And I mean, baby. First of all, don't you ever. I'd have reached across that table and beat Angel ass, okay? Damon stands up and basically says, whenever you out here, Blanca, doing whatever you do on these crusades you be going on, I'm the one who have your back. I'm the one who is always there for you, and I need you to be ha be there for me at this point. But instead, you always defended Angel. Pray jump up and talk about don't re disrespect him, and Damon is like, pray tell when I want your opinion, I will ask you for your opinion, but ain't nobody talking to your ass, okay? So he goes back to Blanca. He goes back to Blanca and start talking about she's selfish. Now that she got her nail shop, she not worried about nobody else. So who the one that's this one that's selfish right now? And um, she all about herself. Then Praytel stands up and says, that's enough. You will not be speaking to her like that in my presence. You don't know the sacrifices have been made so you can dream for the stars or whatever. And he can't wait for life to knock him upside the head so he can see how hard it is. And Damon is like, bitch, I know how hard life is. I was kicked out the house by my parents. Now I'm exposed to HIV by my ex-boyfriend. Ricky is positive. To which this pisses Praytel off because Praytel is one big on telling people, not telling people status because it ain't your business, right? Blanca is like, is Ricky okay? Oh my God, is he okay? And he's like, I don't know. Ask Praytel. I said, ooh, bitch, you messy. Praytel is like, uh-uh, pump the brakes, okay? And you, first of all, you real shitty for telling his status that's not your business and you need to learn some respect. And then Damon is like, you the last motherfucker who need to be talking about respecting nobody. Electra jump up and is like, bitch, I need some Remy more, okay? Because this tea is hot. Damon jump up and say, you want to talk about respect. Why you didn't tell Blanca about Ricky's status? And he was like, it's not my business to tell. He said, is that why you told him? Uh, because you f***. I, and I said, oh, shit. Everybody was like, oh. Going back and forth, back and forth. Damon said, I bet you gonna believe him after he lied too. I said, wait a minute. Damon did not come to play with you hoes today, okay? Uh, pray tell would never do that, right? You would never do that, right? And you'll believe this slut over your own son. Who the slut? Who the slut? Who? Who? Pray tell admits that he was sleeping with Damon. Uh, Lecture is like, now nah, hold the hell up. House mothers and fathers never sleep with their children when I'm not his father, but you an elder. And everybody in the ballroom saying look up to you. You know what you're doing and it ain't right. He's like, it's complicated, okay? Well, Blanca said him, well, you know what? You need to get the hell out of my house. And he said, girl, look, I'm grown. Let's get something clear. I'm grown and he grown. Fuck y'all. I'm out. And Lecture was like, you're not right, honey. You're laying down when you should be standing up. I said, Angel, I don't like them no more. Huh, Poppy, cancel. We at the ball. Poppy wins a trophy. Um, He looked real good with his muscles and whatnot. He looked like he started eating honey buns again low-key, but you know what I'm saying? He still look good. Um, Blanca is sitting by herself at the bar, and Angel and Poppy come over there. He's happy. Angel ass still lying. Talking about something. I didn't do no drugs. I mean, he still, he lying. I said, Listen, she was like, do you believe him? Blanca says, listen, I, you told me you wasn't doing it, so I let it go, girl. And Damon shows up, and um, and he like, I ain't know y'all was having no family meet without me. When is Angel moving on out? Because he's like, did you tell the truth? And she's like, mm-hmm, I 
I told the truth? And he's like, okay, so when you moving out? She was like, I'm not going nowhere. And he's like, what you mean? So you have different rules for different people, basically. Like, so Poppy sell drugs, but he can put out immediately. He homeless. But she'd get to do drugs, hardcore drugs, and she not put out. Like, she said she didn't do it, so I'm just going to let it go. Everybody just let it go. And he's like, so basically you say I'm a liar. And she don't say nothing. She turn around like, Blanca, you being a hypocrite. Okay? It seemed like to me it would have been more easy to say, y'all, it's harder for me to put her out because she's a female. And, you know, putting her out is fucked up. Like, I feel bad. Like, just go ahead and be honest about it instead of, like, treating them unfairly or whatever. But it do come off unfairly, unfair and hypocritical. Damon's category comes up and he's going to Vogue, honey. And Damien votes the people down. You hear me? He was serving us angles, honey. He was serving hammer pants. He was giving us lines, baby. He vogue the people down. He wins the trophy. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And walked the hell out right by Blanca. Didn't say one word to her. Even Pray Tell was like, I know you ain't roll your eyes at me, bitch. I know you didn't roll your eyes at me. As he goes into his dressing room, he's approached by this woman. Her name is Tori. And she works for Malcolm McLaren. And she wants to talk to him. I'm not exactly sure who Malcolm McLaren is, but somebody please fill me in in the comments. I know you all will. And thank y'all for the people who give me the information every week about how this correlates to real events. And, you know, all that information, like, I really appreciate it. So keep doing it. Um, Blanca and Pray Tell talk about Ricky. This is outside of the ball, you know, outside on the street. And he tells her that she has different rules for different people. He's in denial because she does play favorites. And she's like, I don't do that. I don't do that. And he said, Ricky and Damon sleep together, which is against the rules. You don't have no problem with that. But I sleep with Ricky and now you mad at me. Angel do drugs. She gets to stay. But Poppy got put out. Blanca said, you sleeping with somebody who's very vulnerable right now. He's so young. He don't even know who he is yet. And he's just like... I'm just trying to figure out how to live my life. You know, it's not something that happens to me every day, but people try to basically think I look good or think I'm sexy or he, he likes me, you know, and I just, you know, basically like I don't know how to deal with this. This doesn't happen to me all the time. And I'm just trying to live life. I know I made a mistake or whatever. So they start going about off on each other about who got the worst pain. And y'all, this worst pain argument it was really hard to listen to i mean he was talking about i mean because they both sick and he's talking about how it is for him to be sick and she's saying that people don't even want to touch her like a spoon or anything it's harder to be a woman than it is to be a man because at least you could be with another man that have it and y'all could fight the same war but when you out here you know you a trans woman you a trans woman plus you got hiv that's like a whole nother thing i don't i think they're i think the comparison is just it doesn't make any sense to compare. But they argue about it. You know what? Get out of my face, she tells him. And he walks away, but he tells her that um, he comes back and says that he did not mean to hurt anyone, especially her. And he got a little <gasps> in his voice. You know what I'm saying? So he's really hurt about that. Later on that night, Ricky comes over to Pray Tell's house. And Pray Tell is drunk. He laying on the couch. He out of there. You know, he's really depressed. And he's telling him he's a dying black gay man. And he's trying to figure out how to live, right? And he said he blew his friendship up for a player basically the only person who understood him and understood his life was Blanca and he and nah, I he done messed that friendship up for Ricky so basically like who am I gonna be the person to tell my fears to who's going to be my mother now so you can see that he kind of looks to Blanca as sort of a house mother to him as sort of a mother to him okay and Ricky's like well I didn't ask you to defend me he was like bullshit nigga bullshit Okay, you ain't asked me to defend you, but as soon as we found out, we knew that Ricky wasn't going to be around and he was going to have to defend himself or whatever, defend Ricky, basically, and his relationship. So he says, um, Ricky picks him up, puts him in the bed, and, you know, pray tell is just like, you're not going to be here in the morning, just like everybody else, you know what I'm saying, X, Y, and Z. But when he wakes up in the morning, guess who's there? Ricky is there, and he made breakfast, and he had his little vitamins out to kind of help pray tell. And they hold hands, and, you know, pray tell kind of look like, oh, shit, okay, well, you still here? Oh, all right, well, I mean, I guess you, you know, like, I feel like, I feel like the origins of the relationship is wrong, but I do feel like because they're in this situation, you know, they both sick, that they can be a support to each other. I do feel like Ricky is looking for a daddy figure and for stability, though. I'm not going to lie. So in the end, do I think it's going to work out? Probably not. But I do think they're with each other because of their brokenness at this time. Okay, that's that's how I feel. So I kind of feel like the relationship ain't really founded on 
things that relationships should be founded on is founded on the fact that they're going through the same type of pain and they both leaning on each other for support. Um, so Angel meets Blanca at a diner. And Blanca is really optimistic about the future. Angel's like, hold up, girl. What about all the drama? Like, you, Damon, me, Damon, you, pray tell. Okay, like, everything that's going on. Oh, it's just bumps in the road. You know, we family. We gonna get over it. It's nothing. You know, this is for Aunt Blanca forever, you know, optimistic. And Angel stops her because she shades you know, pray tell a little bit. She like, girl, I ain't got time to be worried about what trade, you know, pray tell, bring it home from the club. She like, don't do that. That's real shady. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. And so then she starts to tell him that Damon was right, that she was doing drugs and that she needs to leave. And she's like, Poppy did told you to do that. I knew he wasn't good enough. She's like, no, he did not tell me to do it. I want to do it. I did it. And you told me to be a woman of my word. So, and, and I got to accept the consequences that you get for that. And so she's like, I can't kick you out. You my only daughter. I can't kick you out on the street. She's like, no, consider it to be like a graduation, you know, um, from your daughter to a woman of her own. And she tells her about the place and village with Poppy and how they going to take care of each other. Just like she taught them and they can come over Friday dinners and they hug. And it was a moment or whatever. I don't think that's gonna turn out for good for her and Poppy, but you know, I digress. Blanca comes home and Damon is packing his clothes. He's still giving her the silent treatment. She's trying to make a little small talk with him and she finally is just like, okay, listen, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I made mistakes too, I'm sorry. You know, uh, she told me that she, she was lying. I, I apologize to you. And he tells her about Michael McLaren and going on tour with him. So the day is going to be a week and he's going on tour. How long are you going to be gone for? For a year or more. And guess what the tour is? It's in Europe. So not only has Angel and Poppy left, Damon is leaving too. So this is pretty much all her kids except for Lulu. But I don't even know if Lulu is still House of Winter or she the house with them. House of Ferocity is no longer, right? She's proud of him. She tells him because he's like, I don't think I can do it. She like encourages him once more. You've been working hard for this. You know, don't give up X, Y, and Z. She knew she would have to share him with the world one day. Blanca is down to the um, the little sex dungeon where Electra work at, and she's talking about her kids leaving. You can tell she's feeling some type of way about it. And Electra is telling her, listen, you're not a good mother if your kids don't reject and rebel against you, if they don't want to leave um, your house. If you're not doing that, you're not raising men and women, you're raising parasites. So she was like, there will always be more children to raise. And Blanca's like, no, there, there'll never be anybody like those kids. And she says, listen, whether you're a white woman in Connecticut or you, you know, out here in the hood, girl, mothers choose to shape the world. If you choose to be a mother, you're going to shape the world. So if you want appreciation, your kids will appreciate you when, you when you're dead. If you want appreciation, you need to get a dog. And she gets up and walks out and tells her she'll be just fine. I have really enjoyed Electra for the half, the second half of this season. I have really, really enjoyed her presence on this show. Like, her acting is stepping up like her comic relief is wonderful okay like it really brightened up this heavy ass episode getting into the montage of everybody leaving so damon and angel they make up he go in the room they hug each other you know they've made up then we got damon and blanca they packing all his stuff getting ready for him to leave and then um they hug and he leaves and we see her making her friday night dinner like she always does and she sits down at the table and she cries love takes time to heal when you're hurting so much couldn't see that i was blind to let you go i cannot stand the pain inside cause love takes time i don't want to be here i don't want to be here alone Yes. That's what Mariah Carey used to sing, sing. Okay, she don't sing like that. All in all, I thought this episode was fantastic. Okay, this is one of the best episodes of the whole series. I don't know if next week is the season finale or not. Seems like it will be, though, if I kind of think it is, or a couple more episodes maybe. Cannot wait for the next episode. Okay, I want to hear what you guys thought about it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends. Don't forget to like, okay? Like the video. I mean, we talked about that. Like the video, comment, subscribe. Share with your friends. If you want to follow me on social media, you can on Instagram and Snapchat. I am Watch Dawn of A. At Watch Dawn of A. All right, so holla at me on these internet streets. I will talk to y'all later. Peace.